Hey, good people. Thank you for sharing your time with me. If you're new to this channel, welcome to our loving community. And if you haven't already, please press subscribe. And for those of you who would like to give back um, to this channel, the number one way I would like for everyone to give back is to share videos on narcissistic abuse. Let's do our part in bringing awareness to this abuse. Um, I'm trying to do my part in speaking up, but everyone doesn't want to speak up and have their face seen. And so they want to do it some other way. And so sharing content, blogs and things like that on narcissist about narcissistic abuse to me is a huge part and a huge voice um, within our community to help, again, bring awareness to what we're dealing with. The message today is going to be about how narcissists like to purchase pets for their victims, specifically dogs. The talking about dogs, my dogs are barking now. <laughs> so the ex sociopath wanted to purchase a dog for me. So we would look for dogs, but he always wanted a big dog. Like you need a big dog to protect you. And mastiffs are really the types of dogs he would lean towards mostly. And I was like, you know, that's not going to be a, a dog that I think would fit well for my kids and I, I prefer a smaller dog. So eventually when I was not into the bigger dog conversation, the, the, the conversation just faded away and he became, you know, a little frustrated with me about that. And he moved on, you know, away from that topic. Well, after our breakup and talking to his ex-wife, uh, I realized that purchasing pets is a part of their, some of them, their abuse strategy. He purchased uh, a big dog for her. And I remember him telling me that he purchased the dog to protect her and the children. And of course, you know, he painted himself in the light as the angel and she was the ungrateful one. Um, but here's why when I put the pieces together, what I understand was his purpose in purchasing the dog. For one, it was a dog to replace the fact and hush up the family about his murdering the, the first family dog. And that was confirmed through the sister that yes, the dog died. Um, the ex-wife says that he killed the dog in front of them and um, buried it in the backyard. He did tell me that he buried the dog in the backyard, but said the dog died of, you know, being old. Um, but the reason he killed the dog, I was told, is because um, the dog wouldn't turn against them. Like, I guess he couldn't manipulate the dog into being on his side and turning against his ex-wife and uh, any other, you know, or the kids. And I thought, oh my gosh, that was... You know, at that point when I heard that, I was just, I was nearly mortified, you guys, and wondering why this woman was even on the phone telling me this and not calling the police and not having not reported it and was so nonchalant with telling me about it. Um, later learned that something's off with her too. But okay, back to the story. So um, she said that he murdered the dog, buried the dog in the backyard, and I thought back to when he was asking me about purchasing me, purchasing a dog and a big dog specifically. It had to be a big dog, something like a Mastiff. And um, what I understand now after hearing so many other stories is that they like the challenge of really breaking your animal down to a point to making the animal sort of crazy like them and, be, and where it will become kind of almost dangerous for your family or just really destructive. Um, they put the dog, they'll put the, the pet through the same abuse, the same abuse, abuse cycle, excuse me, but would like to turn the pet against you to make the pet favor them. And this is a twisted, another twisted sociopathic type of behavior that the narcissist will display. Please let me know if you've experienced this. So I was glad essentially after hearing this that I had made the decision to go against his request on getting a big dog for me 
And I imagine that this is an ongoing conversation with him, probably with all victims. You know, I want to get you a, a pet. I'm, it's just weird. I don't, <laughs> I don't fully understand the whole purpose of it, but I do understand it to that point to where they want to uh, manipulate and abuse the dog too, the ant, the pet as well, and turn the pet against you. Um, sort of make the pet in a silent flying monkey because the pet can't really tell you what's going on. They can just show signs of not liking that person. And I know that his ex-wife said that um, the the big dog that he purchased for her um, slept with her all the time and the dog was afraid of him, which is another thing I I believe that they like because to me fear is their supply to get a big dog especially you know the shorter statue um, uh, narcissistic men with you know a huge complex um, they like the, the challenge of making that big dog submit to them it makes them feel bigger I guess I don't know but and the fact that this dog that she had was huge and afraid of him, I believe, gave him some type of high. And I remember him saying that when he went over to her house to pick up the kids or something, that the dogs would just kind of stay away from him and had torn up the entire house. And the house was just disgusting. Well, I later saw that the pictures, the house was immaculate and um, the dogs weren't tearing up the house and everything he told me was a complete lie. But anyway, <laughs> um, but um yeah, the dogs, for the dog, to get the dog and make the dog afraid of them is their goal. And I don't know if female narcs do this. I do know it. most, all of the stories I've heard have been from, from male, about male narcs. But I can assume that there's something with female narcs. If they do, I would be curious to know if this is, you know, something that both male and female do um, with their partners, want to purchase pets and then turn the pets against them. Make the pets in a, to a silent flying monkey and make the pets af and or make the pets afraid of them. I think the preference is to make the pet afraid of them and to put the pet in fear to get to get supply from the pet as well as the family. But when the pet decides to buck up against the narcissist, probably in the case of my ex is when the pet's life can be in danger. Um, but as long as the pet is feeding fear is giving that fear, that supply, then the narcissist will let the pet live. Let me know what you think. I'm interested in knowing your comments and your experiences. We need to have some real talk about some real conversations and real specific things within this abuse that we've experienced. So yes, please let me know um, what you've experienced and, and then let's chat about it soon when we have our next live in January. God bless you all. Take care of yourselves. And again, a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.